Arguably the two most famous stables of cartoon characters are those of Disney and Warner Brothers. At the top of those two mountains are Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny, respectively. But pretty close are the much more aggressive and sometimes more relatable ducks. And no, I don't just say that out of species bias. These two easily angered ducks have had nothing but bad luck in their extensive histories in cartoons, often being the butt of the joke, being humiliated and injured for our amusement. While we do feel bad for them, we also enjoy seeing them get the hell beaten out of them. So, we're gonna make these two incredibly iconic cartoon characters fight each other. Donald Duck, the easily angered duck deuteragonist of Disney. And Daffy Duck, the greedy egomaniac duck of Warner Brothers. In this episode, we will be including just about everything from comics to video games, anything these two ducks have been in. I mean, the two are commonly depicted as being actors who remember all of this stuff. So there may not be a canon we could have gone for, but it also makes things more screwy and fun. This means we'll be including things like Kingdom Hearts and the DC crossovers for both these waterfowls. Anything these two have been in will count, basically. So with that said, let's dive into this screwy matchup and see if we can actually make sense of things. Originating all the way back in 1934, Donald Duck has not only brought many laughs to people, but has changed a good bit too. Back in his first appearance, namely the wise little hen, Donald had a different look to him, but by the short orphan's benefit, the Donald we all know and love was here to stay. After Walt Disney saw Clarence Nash perform his duck voice, he was inspired to create this character, and Donald became integrated into the Mickey Mouse cast. Well known for his short temper and bad luck, Donald would usually find himself playing second fiddle to Mickey. Donald Duck and his anger amused audiences, making him a main draw who rose up from a supporting character to a lead, starting with the short Don Donald in 1937. As he continued on, he became even more popular than Mickey, forging his own legacy and gaining a wide family tree of other Duck relatives, most notably his nephews Huey, Louie, and Dewey, and his uncle Scrooge McDuck even going on various globe-trotting adventures and spinning off into an incredibly successful line of comics. Donald Duck has been around for 86 years, going on numerous adventures. He went to World War II, he was on Noah's Ark, he became a powerful mage in Kingdom Hearts, he joined the Navy, he was part of the Free Musketeers and the Free Caballeros, and of course, he's had several encounters with two chipmunks named Chip and Dale, who continuously screw with this poor duck. Luckily, Donald has insane resilience and can always get back up after taking a hit. As you would expect of a Mickey Mouse character, Donald has Toon Force. This means he's taken a lot of punishment. The guy can shake off lightning strikes, large explosions, anvils falling on him, and even an entire building falling on him. And that's just scratching the surface. As things get crazier in the Mickey Mouse universe, what with cartoony logic reigning supreme, many unsuspecting characters pull off incredibly powerful feats as a goof. Speaking of, Goofy himself was able to shatter the sun, not once, but twice before. And Donald is definitely on par with him, as well as most likely being on par with Minnie Mouse, who spun Pete so hard that he shattered the moon. We see another instance of moon busting when Clarabelle Cow screeches in Goofy's face so hard that it shatters the moon behind them. It's not just scaling that shows Donald as impressive. Given that he can kick soccer balls hard enough to create sonic booms, Ignite fireworks by sheer speed and impact with a bowl, and perhaps most in line with the sun and moon feeds. Lifted two condensed stars. Donald has even shown the strength to fight off the Heartless, and even beings like Xehanort in Kingdom Hearts. This franchise is filled with heavy hitters, given its one big crossover with Disney and Final Fantasy, and given that Donald is part of the main trio with Sora and Goofy. He is often able to take on the powerful beings that they face throughout their adventures. As I mentioned, Donald was able to take on Xehanort, and proved that he was strong enough to perform Zeta Flare. The Zeta Flare is the strongest version of the Flare attack in Final Fantasy, only ever used by incredibly strong beings like Aerie, Bahamut, and... Donald Duck. The Zeta Flare is the equivalent of 1 sextillion flares. It is 1 billion times stronger than Terra Flare. Alongside his friends, he fought against Xehanort, even when he was wielding the X-Blade, which had granted him the power to destroy all the worlds in Kingdom Hearts and essentially recreate the universe in a new world that would balance light and darkness. Remember when Donald Duck was just having goofs with Mickey Mouse? 
Don can run up walls, dodge gunfire and comets, and even travel as a lightning bolt. But the more extreme feats this duck has land him much higher numbers. Pluto was able to travel across our solar system in a very short period of time, clocking in at several thousand times the speed of light. In the Free Caballeros cartoon, however, we see one of his greatest speed feats, where he, Jose, and Zandra travel to the center of the cosmos in less than a day. We at least know this would be a good few galaxies away, if not many hundreds. Donald as Papernick was even able to keep up with that whom, who traveled two light years in at most three seconds, clocking in at over 175 million times the speed of light. As we know now, Kingdom Hearts is pretty screwy, but in a less cartoony and more anime way. The characters get pretty dang fast, and Donald's always keeping up the pace. Sora and Riku were able to dodge all of these lasers coming from every direction. Plus, he can scale to Mickey, who pilots the Gummy Ship, which can be scaled to Monstro, who scales to the High Wind, which is capable of traveling to different worlds which exist in several different solar systems in just 130 seconds. That's a whole lot, alright. Okay, so Donald Duck is shockingly powerful, but he wouldn't be the duck he is today without his classic cartoon abilities. His Toon Force not only allows him great strength, survival, and speed, but it also allows him to randomly pull out a lot of different items and weapons whenever it seems necessary, as well as instantly heal himself from strange or odd injuries, including getting flattened, burnt to a crisp, or mangled. Plus, he can walk on air, alter his body for gags or metaphorical situations, with perhaps the most useful one being turning his tail feathers into propellers to slow his descent. Donald can even survive being completely erased! When a fellow Toon Force user erased him with a pencil, Donald immediately reappeared, so, such methods are not that effective against him. Donald even has fourth wall awareness, generally aware of what medium he's in, and he's able to leave his own cartoon and meet real life people, from celebrities to random women, all of which he proceeds to chase down. Donald has even reached out of people's computers before. He could get you right now. What Donald is most known for is his temper. <coughs> but it actually powers him up and gives him the adrenaline of extra anger to enhance his strength and other physicality. Even from birth, Donald came out of his egg punching out of it and yelling. And going on further into his life, the dust clouds he kicks up in rage can send people flying. Literal fire and steam come out of him, and he won't hesitate to straight up murder someone. Donald wouldn't even care about collateral damage, even on the cosmic scale. Donald's rage has often gotten him into scuffles, and luckily for him, he's a well enough fighter to stand his ground in a fight. Donald has learned Judo. As Maui Mallard, he learned Ninjutsu, well enough to fight against enemies while blindfolded. And in general, he has plenty of experience fighting magic users, aliens, robots, and weird anime villains. Donald is also a skilled mage, given that we've already went into how he's basically a top tier of the Final Fantasy universe. As well, he can heal himself, mess with gravity, and slow time, can reflect attacks, and can even change others, shrinking them or turning them into hybrids with other animals. But even before Kingdom Hearts, Donald Duck had control over lightning. These powers were gifted to him by Greek gods. What? He can shoot electricity from his hands, and even position them like arrows that he'll shoot at people. He can electrify anyone he touches, and he even seems to gain a strength increase. These electrical abilities even resurface in other media, like sports games where he can charge up with electricity. He can even use his electricity to form a protective shield around himself. Donald Duck also has access to black magic, proving his expertise in multiple magical fields. He can revert shrinking spells, become giant, or specifically grow certain parts to attack like a battle toad, or impress Daisy. Additionally, Donald has absorbed the power of an amulet, alongside his other friends of the Three Capieros, increasing his strength even further as well as allowing him some kind of walking on air slash levitation ability, a mild healing factor, and even matching godlike beings who are shown destroying the earth and moving the sun, as well as gaining a light beam ability that is capable of sealing away those kinds of beings. Donald is also shown to be pretty intelligent, even though he'll often let his emotions cloud his judgment. Donald has gained a variety of skills as a treasure hunter, detective, hunter, and a secret spy. After spending some time in Mathemagic Land, he learned a lot about math, and he has been able to constantly outwit villains and get out of sticky situations. Donald Duck has gone from Mathemagic to Polymath, given the wide array of skills he's displayed over the years, from expertise in various sports, cultures, musical instruments, racing, and auto mechanics, as well as his previously stated magical prowess. He's a skilled master of stealth, 
working as a ninja named Cold Shadow. And he's even an expert tactician as the superhero known as the Duck Avenger. That's a good segue into his personality in general. Donald is generally displayed as a hothead, but the degree of which tends to vary. Sometimes he's more mature and down to earth, but other times he's angry to the point of being kind of crazy. However, when he isn't angry, Donald is actually pretty well relaxed, is generally very friendly, and likes to get into playful mischief. Family in particular seems to be his main driving force. His anger has manifested out of genuine care for his family on several occasions, most specifically his three nephews Huey, Dewey, and Louie. <laughs> His bad attitude can be a hindrance, but sometimes it can help, given that his stubbornness makes him extremely committed to whatever he's doing. He started out as a clumsy coward who had many things getting the better of him, but as he's grown and matured, he's not only gained and displayed many varied skills, but has also been able to be more level-headed. The one time Donald was able to be understood, it was revealed that he was actually a pretty good leader, and is great at taking charge. In fact, this quick-thinking mind is shown in how he uses his wide arsenal. It should be no surprise Donald has hammer space. He can pull basically anything he wants out from behind his back, even things much bigger than him. Guns, mallets, axes, and anvils are just a few of what this duck has to offer, but he could theoretically pull out any of his weapons. So let's get into specifics. Donald has a plunger gun to travel across large gaps, and a sheet that releases a transmutating gust of magic, although this only works on weaker enemies. Donald also has a bottle of liquid isotopes, once Donald drinks it, he'll gain many powers. He gains the ability to breathe in space, lift entire mountains, and even turn them inside out. He tied two comets together, jumped to the moon, and his perception of time slows down to the point that it appears to be standing completely still. Even his three nephews were standing completely still, and they have a few instances of scaling to their uncle. If you think all that's neat, he gained quite an arsenal during his time as Papernick. A boomerang, freeze ray, masks for disguising himself, a spy bug, and most of all, the crippling gun and paralyzing pistol, which temporarily render the opponent completely immobile, the former doing so for about six hours. He has the X-Transformer shield, which he wears like a glove and lets him fly. It can do a variety of other things, most important being its ability to shoot the Bradionic Paralyzer Ray, which can petrify a target forever. And it also gives them access to Uno, the most intelligent AI in the world, who can give Donald advice and read up on his opponent. Donald also has this power suit, which increases his strength and protects him from mind control. However, for all the things going right for Donald Duck, there are just as many things going against him in life, which leads us from Donald's greatest power to his worst weaknesses. Donald Duck is not perfect. Ah, what do you know, you big puddle cat? Donald has ridiculously bad luck. Literally, he gets stuck with all of it. He's very brash and forward-thinking, especially when excited or especially when angry. In fact, Donald loses most of his rationality when he's annoyed, so this can make him pretty easy to trick as well. While his stamina is pretty high, the Zeta Flare is a one-and-done kind of deal, wearing him out immensely. In fact, his magic isn't unlimited. There's a finite amount to use, and if he runs out, he'd have to rely on other methods to get the job done. But in spite of all of that, Donald is a top star of Disney for a reason, and has proven that time and time again. Whatever he's been through, and whatever bad luck he's gotten stuck with, Donald Duck has always proven that he can stick it out to the end. Your autograph, sir? Let me have it! Huh? Okay! Yeah, right. <laughs> of Mary Melody's hosts many kooky characters, but there are few comparable to the powerhouse himself, Daffy Duck, in fame or sheer ego. Daffy Duck originated all the way back in 1937, in the short Porky's Duck Hunt. Back then, Daffy was intended as a reoccurring adversary of Porky Pig. Eventually, however, Daffy was able to stand out on his own. His design evolved to be less like a duck and more of a humanoid, and his personality went through a similar overhaul. Now, as time went on, Daffy was still crazy, but more grounded. His greed, aggression, and opportunistic values became more prominent. But the biggest change, however, was that he lost his upper hand. 
he was now the punchline. What's the matter with you people? Almost makes you feel bad for him. But it helped in making him a more relatable and enjoyable character. Plus, he's got the physicality to deal with his predicaments. Daffy can rip out other skeletons, fight on par with Foghorn Leghorn, and uproot trees. To further detail Daffy's strength, whenever he's feeling especially patriotic, Daffy can muster the strength to punch out large shells shot from a battleship, and even lift Nazi submarines. It makes you wonder why he was so scared about meeting the man from the draft board. Daffy's strength also seems to change based on his levels of greed. And considering how greedy Daffy is, that basically means he can fuel himself for a while. We see this when he beats up the Tasmanian Devil after Taz took a dollar from him. Speaking of that, Daffy scales to the rest of the Looney Tunes, generally speaking. He can scale to Bugs Bunny, who survives the moon blowing up with him on it. He also scales to Marvin the Martian, who is strong enough to pull stars around. Yosemite Sam is strong enough to pull black holes around, and the two of them created a constellation when they slammed into each other with said objects. He can also damage Porky, who survived Planet X blowing up, along with Marvin again. In fact, Daffy was on that planet too, which is a good transition into his own durability. On a daily basis, Daffy survives a shotgun blast to the face, most especially seen in Rabbit Fire, with the infamous Duck Season Rabbit Season gag. Besides that, Daffy can endure being flattened, twisted, and mangled in a variety of ways, to the degree that he can even walk around after getting cut clean in half. Daffy is also no stranger to explosions, surviving them on a daily basis. As we said, these explosions have even extended to blowing up the entirety of Planet X, and leaving him perfectly fine and still talking. More into the adventures of Duck Dodgers, he is later seen surviving inside of a black hole, and he even crawls out of it to assure everyone that it's very tidy inside. Besides, of course, the durability it would take to survive inside a black hole, it would take speeds faster than the speed of light, since not even light itself can escape black holes. Daffy can dodge gunfire, move as a bolt of lightning, keep up with bugs while digging, who can dig to entirely different continents on accident. You know, I just bet we should have turned left at Albuquerque. And Daffy himself was able to pilot his own faster-than-light spaceship, which was able to travel to different planets in seconds. Of course, being a cartoon character, Daffy can do almost anything if he thinks it's funny. While his Toon Force has backfired before against people like Bugs Bunny, it often goes off without a hitch in his earlier outings against Porky Pig. Daffy can pull massive objects out of nowhere, he can regenerate from any and all physical harm off-screen, and he can talk just fine with his bill, even when it's been detached. For that matter, he seems to operate just fine when his head is removed from his shoulders. He can breathe in space and underwater with no issue, come back from being erased, teleport, sometimes possesses minor shapeshifting, like growing a hand out of his ass. He can also do random things like skating on unfrozen water, riding invisible bicycles, running into paintings, much like fellow Looney Tune Roadrunner, and in general, just a lot of odd, cartoony things. Daffy even once made a pact with the devil himself to gain demonic powers, allowing him to shoot electricity and even fire, although his fire can be easily put out with a fire extinguisher. Daffy, despite being generally cowardly and reluctant to fight, can actually put up his dukes if needed, like when he got into a fight with Elmer Fudd, and, to teach him the rules of what wasn't allowed in boxing, beat the shit out of him. Daffy is also skilled with nunchucks and fencing, making enemies sample his blade. Daffy can fly. Yes, he is a duck. Not just regular flying, but also running on the air, but it also tires him out. And he sometimes even forgets that he can fly or suddenly seems unable to do so. Lastly, Daffy is well aware that he's a cartoon character, and is generally in the know of whatever medium he's in. He can talk to the audience or the animator of his cartoons, and if the cartoon is destroyed in some way, he can come on screen and explain to the audience what happened in the rest of the cartoon. Although, of course, he'll be lying. Daffy can even outright leave his cartoon to hang out in the real world. Not only that, but he has broken the cartoonist's tools that were being used on him before, as well as somewhat resisting their influence, and has traveled in between comic book panels, and even became the animator himself, on two separate occasions, no less. When he's the animator, Daffy can control the very universe of the cartoon, 
changing its scenery, erasing other cartoon characters, and being able to use either paint and paper or a tablet. When he faced Bugs Bunny with paint and paper, he ended up failing. But with his tablet, he had so much control over the cartoon that he was even able to outright delete Bugs. Obviously, it would take a lot of intelligence to figure this all out, but that's not all, folks. Often through dumb luck, but sometimes through actual cunning, Daffy has outwit everyone from Martians, to hunters, to wild animals, to even Nazis, and slipped out of their violent grasp. He can often utilize various forms of trickery, from disguises to just plain lies, and seemingly convince those around him of these mistruths. He has shown dexterity in things from boxing, to swimming, to rigging an explosive in a piano, though that one did backfire on him. Daffy also worked as a German translator for the US Army, and apparently knows enough about being a cartoon to be a teacher at Acme University. As we had said previously, Daffy started off his days with more energy, often hopping around and hooting with laughter, and was... well, pretty much insane. But, ever since he met Bugs Bunny, who he had previously admired and wanted to meet, Daffy became more cynical after suffering several losses to him. Since then, Daffy has become incredibly eager to gain the spotlight, wanting nothing more than fame and fortune. Daffy embodies a lot of negative personality traits. Selfishness, greed, cowardice, gullibility, ignorance, and egotism. He can even be outright evil and mean-spirited sometimes, destroying things so others can't have them, or letting friends of his be in danger if it can save his feathered hide. That all said, Daffy isn't all bad, considering he can have a good amount of heroic and or sympathetic moments. Truly though, he wants to be appreciated and respected more than anything, and it would wear anyone down to be treated so poorly. Daffy has quite a few tools to work with as well. Thanks in part to his hammer space, Daffy's able to pull out basically anything he wants. Mallets, anvils, axes, etc. He also has a few guns, most of which are pretty unremarkable, but one was actually able to shoot the moon out of the sky and pop it like a balloon. Speaking of guns, he has a bulletproof vest. Other things he can wear are his many disguises, which he consistently proves work somehow, even though he's very clearly a duck still. Even more impressive would be his Acme Disintegrating Pistol. And brother, when it disintegrates, it disintegrates. <laughs> well, what do you know? It's disintegrated. But in case someone has a counter-disintegrating pistol on hand, he has his disintegration-proof vest, which certainly is the case. If the name doesn't lie. He also one-ups Kylo Ren. His rinky-dink three-bladed saber is nothing to Daffy's six-bladed beam sword, which even impales him for good measure. Never know who your opponent could be disguised as, you know? On the more useful side of things, Daffy once donned himself as Robin Hood and utilized a bow and arrow and a quarterstaff. It didn't go so well. Daffy has a pair of nunchucks, which he was able to use with enough speed and precision to lift himself off the ground. Duck Dodgers uses a lot of other weapons and gadgets, like your typical blasters, dynamite, freeze rays, copyright free beam swords, instantly growing buildings, among many others. In the SNES game, Daffy even gains access to the antimatter gun, which stuns enemies. Finally, we have Daffy's greatest form yet, Stuper Duck. In his superhero form, he can fly, and even fly around the planet enough times to go back in time. He's strong enough to lift entire buildings, and he has red hot and extra spicy vision. With it, he can melt metal down, although he has trouble aiming it. He has tickle charged feathers which tickle people, and he can turn himself into a large magnet. In this form, Daffy is incredibly strong, but he's still nowhere near as strong as the real Superman, and while he is stronger than normal, his constant need to show off makes him screw up his great power, and instead makes him fall flat on his face. This finally takes us right back to the downfalls of Daffy Duck. Unfortunately, as mentioned before, Daffy has a lot of negative personality traits that hinder him, but that's not all. His weapons can often backfire on him, and he generally seems to have bad luck or get treated poorly. He also seems to be susceptible to certain methods of harm, considering that he can still be knocked out, decapitated, or disintegrated. But, despite all of his failings, Daffy Duck is ultimately an incredibly hilarious and wacky duck, and despite being under Bugs Bunny's shadow for so long, in the real world he has gained a lot of respect and recognition, the kind of popularity he had always hoped for. While Daffy often gets the short end of the stick, he never gives up, and will always stand right back up to give the audience a show. Win or lose, 
two great ducks will be fighting today. I am so proud of this moment. Almost ready to close the curtain on this season. Let's finish this off with a bang. Donald or Daffy? Well, that's all of our research, folks. Now for this merry melody of an animation to commence. <laughs> I'm not crazy! I just don't give a darn! Does anyone understand what this duck is saying? Fight! For you, Mac. Brother, I don't write these scripts. They've got me here doing my old stick mixed with Yogi Bear. Who paired me with this guy anyways? Oh, this duck doesn't have an ounce of talent that I do. Oh, yeah. My blood? Hey, animator guy! It may come to complete shock to you to realize that this is a children's cartoon. Do something! <coughs> what is this supposed to be? Sweat? What are we, Nintendo? Brother, what a way to run a railroad! Doer, I am Duck Duggers in the 24th and a half century! Just laugh at Daffy's expense. Ho ho ho! This will be fun. Finally, I can be the cartoonist tormenting the duck for a change. <laughs> yeah. Let's start by making you understandable for once, shall we? You stupid freak! When I get you back down here, I'll. Ah, that's much better. Nice and smooth. Eh, <laughs> 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 those 
Ducks to Ducks are getting out of hand. Boy, I'll say, pal. Uh huh. Nah, poor fellas. That settles that. Even after all this destruction and most of the known universe being taken out, we all know one thing: that I am the superior cartoon duck. It was always me. That's really all that matters at the end of the day. <laughs> What do you know? I'm, uh, disintegrating like Thanos. Is there a doctor in the house? Oh, can do, buddy. You're despicable. I am sad to have seen a duck die, but I am still satisfied with these results. And there's good reasoning for them, as well. Really, this was incredibly tricky to solve. Both Donald and Daffy had ridiculous abilities that defied all logic, and could do pretty much anything they put their minds to. With both of them being able to come back from almost anything, it was hard to figure out who would outdo the other. Talking on pure tactics and skill, Donald had it over Daffy. He's trained in more fields, shows greater general competency, and is more willing and experienced in fighting. This is added on by his wider arsenal, as both himself and in other forms, whereas Daffy mostly only rivals him as Duck Dodgers in this respect. But even with that, both can sort of pull things out of nowhere anyways, but only one of them has magic, and that is Donald. 
I mean, you know Kingdom Hearts, right? You might be thinking that Daffy could just escape the cartoon and erase Donald completely, but there are three issues of that method. One, Donald has in fact been erased before, and just rushed back on screen no worse for wear. Two, Donald himself has actually escaped the cartoon before to interact with the real world, so he could simply reach out and yank Daffy back into the cartoon if he wanted. Three, Donald is way too quick for Daffy anyways, so he wouldn't even get the chance to escape the cartoon in the first place. It doesn't help that Donald is generally way more competent than Daffy anyways. Daffy is usually more incompetent, or just plain unwilling to fight, either out of cowardice or laziness. And even when it's just bad luck screwing him over, it usually serves as a defeat, unlike Donald, where it just piles on and on until he blows up in a super pissed off rage. But of course, the big factor here was power, and this is where Donald truly shines greater than Daffy. Donald, through his adventures in Kingdom Hearts, end up scaling to beings like Xehanort, who was powerful enough to erase and reshape the universe in his image. Fighting against beings like him sets himself, Sora, and Goofy at Universal at their peak. Meanwhile, Daffy peaks at large star level. We'll get back to that in a bit. But alright, let's play devil's advocate. What if we didn't want to use Kingdom Hearts? Would Donald Duck still win? We concluded the answer is still yes, just with much greater difficulty. Both Donald and Daffy at that point are pretty comparable in Toon Force and physicality, being in the large star level area, if not higher. But what this does not change is Donald's speed. Not even Stupor Duck can keep up with the insane speeds of Zad Hoom. Even with the planetary travel the Looney Tunes ships boast, there's never been a character who's traveled several light years in seconds. Even Bugs' rocket, which traveled outside of the galaxy, which is the fastest thing we ever found in Looney Tunes history, was significantly slower than this. And that's if we scale Bugs to his own rocket, which is just not justified in any way. With greater speed, Donald is still very capable of getting the better of Daffy with his hacksier weaponry that can leave Daffy completely unable to fight or even defend himself, like with the Bradionic Paralyzer Ray, which could freeze Daffy forever and pretty much render this fight done. But what about DC scaling and the Green Loon turn? Well, that's a whole pack of worms on the surface, but the answers are actually pretty simple. Simply put, the Looney Tunes never do anything to justify scaling to the Heralds of DC. Even Marvin taking on Martian Manhunter was only possible with his vast arsenal, which is shown to one-shot Daffy in the past. The Green Loon Turn, meanwhile, isn't standard, as his ring was, in fact, the one owned by Hal Jordan, and was taken away in the end. The only Looney Tunes character who could likely scale fully would be Bugs in his Super Bugs form, which not even Stupor Duck could scale to, since they've surprisingly never met. Even if he did scale to all of this, Daffy Duck would need to become Stupor Duck in the first place, before Donald just blitzes him in base form. It doesn't help that Donald can just outright freeze time with his magic. Donald and Daffy are both usually made a fool of, sure, but Donald's got a much more aggressive outlook on fighting, while Daffy is far more sleazy and lazy. Just compare the attitudes of them at their most heroic, Duck Dodgers and Kingdom Hearts, or the Free Caballeros. Donald takes fighting way more seriously and strategizes a lot more, whereas Duck Dodgers was shown to be, for the most part, a complete joke. Plus, Daffy usually tricks his foes, but rarely fights hand to hand. But ultimately, while both have their moments, they're two of the biggest and most influential characters in animation history. Their many abilities and feats are a testament to their histories and legacies, which cover so many genres. Unforgettable stories are what these two will be remembered for, likely for the rest of time. Who wins matters very little. These two have touched so many hearts already. Ultimately, this match had many factors. But, Daffy Duck's greater Toon Force and animation manipulation weren't enough to justify him beating Donald Duck with his greater strength, speed, durability, intelligence, and arsenal. Making this multiverse match's winner, Donald Duck.